Okay. So what color do we use on worksheets? Red or blue. Only for the class worksheets or all the worksheets? All the worksheets, because I've seen some students still using black for their homework for some reason, which is kind of crazy. I mean, all does mean all. Last time I checked, right? So we are working on the two step. Okay. So I'm going to be, I think I'm going to be red today. I'll go ahead and pick red. Let me pick red. So now it's on my list and I can pick it. Okay. The first thing you have to do with your two step equations, with any equations now that are more than one step in them, you're going to have to combine like terms. Okay. Now, combine like terms is what we've been doing. That table was combining like terms. Okay. So, combining like terms means we're going to pull together the things that are the same type x's with regular x's. X squared with X squared, okay? Um, numbers with numbers, Y's with Y's. A Y squared and a Y are not the same thing. We learned that when we were doing combining last week, okay? So after you combine like terms, okay? After you combine like terms, you're going to be moving the smallest variable first, okay? You're gonna move the smallest variable first. Then you're gonna make zero pairs. And that was making the big zero, okay? So let's say big zero pairs, so. Big zero pairs. And you're gonna be making big one pairs. No, big zero pairs come first. That's right. Okay. So we move the smallest variable first. We make some big zero pairs to get rid of those adds and subtracts. Right. Then we're going to be isolating the variable using the opposite, which means inverse operation. This is where we make the big one. That's the step where we make big one pairs. Okay. And then we will be checking our answer by replacing the value of the number, value of the letter in and seeing if it balances. Okay. So we've kind of already done this a little bit, but we don't have, we didn't have to do two steps. We only did one. Okay, we only did one. Okay, so we're going to do some examples together. Okay, first example. One minute. Okay, we're going to do 2x, oops, I don't want to do a text box, I'm going to do an equation box. Equation, too many. 2x plus 7 equals 35. Okay, there's my problem. minus 9x, okay? We want to have something interesting to work with, okay? There's our problem. According to the rules, we have to first move the smallest variable. So which variable is smaller? Positive 2 or negative 9? Which variable is smaller? 
positive two or negative nine. Because remember, subtract means negative. Negative nine. So we need to move the negative nine, like we learned last week, by doing the opposite of what it is now. It's negative. We need to make a big zero and make it positive so that we can make the big zero. So what do I need to do to move that negative nine out of there to make the big zero? What do I need to do? What do we need to do to undo a negative nine? What do we need to do to undo a negative nine, guys? What's the opposite of negative nine? Let's do opposites. We've got to make those big zeros. Add nine to both sides. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna add nine X to both sides. We're gonna go get our line down the middle to remind us we have to keep our balance beam going. Whatever we do on the left, we have to do on the right. Okay. I'm going to move this so it lines up a little bit better. I want those that 2x to line up with the 9. Because that's who it's being added to. And I want that plus 9 to add up with the negative 9. Okay. When I add a 2x plus a 9x, what do I have? What do I have? 11x, which is going to be equal to this is going to go away, right? This uh, 9x negative and 9x positive. Those are going to become the big zero, so we don't need that anymore, right? So what's left over on this side? Oh, I forgot the plus seven. Sorry. He's still there. Okay. He's still there. Okay. So I say again, what's left on the left-hand side after we do the big zero? to the 9x part. What's still there? Mm -hmm. So it equals 35. Let me make it a little bigger so that shows better. Yeah, my equal sign shows a little better. Okay. So we understand this step. That was what we did last time. We added to the both sides or subtracted from both sides, right? Okay, so now we have to get rid of this seven. How are we gonna get rid of that seven? What are we gonna do? Yep. We're still adding and subtracting. We're still making big zeros. So we're still on that first step, making big zeros. So I have to undo a positive seven by doing a negative seven. 
So I'm going to subtract seven from the left. And whatever I do to the left, I have to do the right. So I have to subtract seven over here from this 35. Because whatever we do on the left, we have to do on the right. Okay, I made some big zeros, right? I made a big zero right here with this seven. Okay, so now I'm cleaning this up. What's left on the left-hand side? Now that I've done away with those sevens with the big zero, what's left on that side? What's left on the left-hand side once we dig zero? No, left-hand side. 11x, yes, okay. Okay, and like someone already said, 11x is gonna equal 28 because 35 minus seven is 28. Okay, so I handled all of the adding and subtractings. I made the big zeros, okay? I now have to undo this 11 with the X. I now have to make the 11 go away. What does the 11 X mean? What math operation does that mean? If I stick a number with a letter, what math operation does that mean? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. Multiplying. So we have to get rid of that multiply. We have to make a big one. How are we going to do that? How are we going to get rid of that multiply? What do we do to make a big one out of this? What do we do to make the big one? Divide by? What are we dividing by? Divide is the right answer, but what are we dividing by? 11 because we have to make a big one. So 11x divided by 11 is gonna equal, nope, we gotta get off the equal. It's gonna equal the 28 divided by the 11. Okay, because we made the big one right here. And our answer is, We're gonna fix something. I want this to come out more pretty than it's coming out. So we're gonna slightly alter the original problem. We're gonna change this 35 to a 29. So go back and change all your 35s to 29. Because what's 29 take away seven? 22. And 22 is something, 11 divides easily. Now, are all the problems going to come out pretty with the answers? No. Okay, yes, you can have a fraction answer. But since I'm in control of it, I'd rather not have that. So I'm being nice and we're going back and adjusting the original problem to be something that's easier to work with. Okay, so what is 22 divided by 11? What is our x? Now our last step, so we finished step one and we finished step two. Step one was make your, um, step one was combine like terms if you had any. So if you had had like two X's on the same side or two numbers on the same side, we'll get some of those in example two. Then you have your make your big zeros and then you have your make your big ones. Okay. So we need to go 
check your answer. It's super important with these problems that you check your answer. I know it seemed silly on Thursday checking your answer because they were such easy problems, but these are not easy problems anymore. This is two parentheses, two plus a seven has to equal a 29 minus a nine times two. I have to take that two back into the original problem and double check that the math works out and I didn't make a math error along the way when I was solving, okay? So it's really important that you check your answer because it is super easy when you're doing this adding and subtracting stuff in the middle to mess yourself up and accidentally do the wrong direction. So like you thought in your head, subtract seven, but on the paper, you wrote an add seven or you subtracted seven on one side and added seven to the other. You can super mess yourself up with the adding and subtracting steps. So you do have to check your work. What is, so we put the two into our original equation, right? We went back to the top. We replaced the x that was in the top with our two and we're solving. So this says two times two, what's that? Two times two, four. Mm -hmm. So we have a four plus, get out of the way, seven equals 29 minus nine times two. Nine times two. Eighteen. Oops. Eighteen. Okay, now we get to do combine my terms. Four plus seven. Eleven. Twenty nine take away eighteen. Twenty nine take away eighteen. Read your private chats, please. Twenty nine take away eighteen. So did it work out? Yes. So we put a little check mark. And our final answer is X equals two. Okay, we're gonna go do another one. Read your private messages, please. There are a couple of people I'm working private messages with. Okay. So we're gonna do another one. Let's go get our equation. All right, three X plus seven minus five X plus two equals four X minus And I'd like to change this one to a three. Okay, so step one, combine our like terms. 
notice our left side has more than one X in it and it has more than one number in it. So we have to simplify those before we can start shifting sides. Simplify those before we can start shifting sides. So what are the like things in the three X is like the negative five X, right? I don't know if it's gonna let me highlight it like that. Because it's not showing up. Oh, let's do this angle. The three X is like the negative five X. That's one set of like terms. Okay, and get a different color. And then the seven positive and the two positive. Those are like terms, okay? They would have been in the same column if we did the column thing, okay? They would have been in the same column if we'd done the column thing. Okay, so we have to pull those together before we could start figuring out our big zeros and our big ones. Okay, before we can start doing our big zeros and our big ones. So this says a 3x and a negative 5x. What are we going to do about that? Are those the same sign? 3x and negative 5x, are those the same sign? No. So when they're not the same sign, but we're doing addition and subtraction to them, what do we do? When they're not the same sign, but we're doing addition and subtraction to them, what do we do? What do we do first? Before we use the sign of the bigger one, what do we do first? What math operation are we going to do with those? Subtracting. So what is the sign of the bigger one? A negative. And then 5 take away 3. What is 5 take away 3? What is the five take away the three? We know it's negative because the five is negative. Negative two. Okay, now we have to do the same thing with the positive seven and the positive two. Positive seven with positive two gets us how much? Don't forget we have an X on it. Okay, gets us a positive nine. We need to get out of the habit of just saying nine. We need to be saying positives or negatives, okay? Because um, if I just said nine, I would not have put the plus sign there, okay? When I say positive nine, it reminds me to put the plus sign there. Did I do anything to the other side of the equal sign? Did I change anything on that side? No. So we're done doing step one, which is our combining like terms. Okay, we're done doing step one, which is the combining like terms. We cleaned up the left side so it's easier to see and work with. We're keeping the right side the same. So we are still equaling 3x minus 6. That's still there. We didn't change that. Okay. Now we're going to go to our step one of our instructions, which says, Move the smallest variable first. Who's the smallest variable? Don't forget to say your signs. Who's the smallest variable? Hmm? 
negative 3x. There's no negative 3x on there. Negative 2x, yeah. Okay, so negative 2x, right? So we have to move a negative 2x. So what are we going to do? We have to move a negative. So we're going to add 2x to both sides. Right. Okay. So I'm going to add a, not an equal, add a 2x to the negative 2x. And on the other side, I'm going to add the 2x to the 3. There you go, wrong thing. Thought I grabbed what I wanted. Okay, so now I created a big zero, right? Right here. That's a big zero, it's gone. So what's left on that side of the, of the equal sign? If that is gone, what's left on that side of the equal sign? What's left on this left side of the equal sign? Just the positive nine, right? And that's gonna equal A 3x plus a 2x, so what's that? A 3x plus a 2x, what's that? So that's what it says, 3x plus 2x makes what? 3x plus 2x makes 5x, and we still have that minus 6 because we didn't do anything to it. We didn't do anything to it yet. Put the equal sign back in the middle where it should be. Okay, so now we've got to go look. We have finished step one, combine like terms. We have finished smallest variable first. Now we have to get the variable alone. We have to isolate our variable, get our big zero. So what needs to go, because it doesn't have a variable attached, but it's on the same side as the variable. What should not be there? The six, yes. It's a six though. What sign is it? What sign is it? Okay, negative six. So we have to undo a negative six. Undo a negative six. What are we gonna do to undo a negative six? Add six to both sides, that's right. So I'm gonna add six to the negative six because I want what? What am I getting when I add that six? What am I trying to get? I'm gonna add six to the nine. Why did I add six to a negative six? What was my goal? Get the zero, yeah, our big zero. Okay, so we got our big zero. Sixes are now gone. Okay. What is the left side gonna say now that I moved a six over with the nine? 15, mm -hmm. has to equal. What's the other side gonna say now that the big zero happened over there? 5x. Okay. So we're now on our last step, getting the variable alone. What's with the variable that shouldn't be there? We want it to go because it's just getting in the way. Does the right side say x with nothing there but x? No. So we need something to go because it's 
getting in the way of just an X. What needs to go? What needs to go? The five. Now, how are we gonna get rid of that five? It says five X, what does that mean? Anytime I see number variables stuck together, what does that mean? It means multiply. So we have to do the opposite. Opposite, inverse. Okay, same thing. Okay, so we're going to divide both sides. By what number? What are we dividing by? The five. So whatever's with the x is what we're dividing by. Yes. So my left side says 15 over five has to equal five X over five, right? Okay, so now we get to figure the math because we've got a big one and we can make it go away. This is a big one, it's gone. I just have an X left on that side Whenever you write your final answer, put the variable on the left. So X equals, what's five, 15 divided by five? Three. Okay, so now we've got to go check to see if we've done all our math correctly by taking this three back to the original, putting it in where the X is and see if it works out. Okay, so my original problem said three times my x value, which is three, plus seven minus five times my three, plus a two. I'm gonna make the writing smaller so that our box goes. I'm going down to 14. Plus two equals three x minus, oops, three times three minus six. Okay, all I did was take the original problem, take my answer and put it in for everywhere I saw an X. That's all I did. Everywhere I saw an X, I stuck the number three in its spot. Now I'm gonna go do the cleanup. Three times three. Three times three. Guys, three times three. Come on. Nine. Okay. So this says nine plus seven minus three times five. Fifteen plus two has to equal nine minus six. Okay, because the left side didn't do very much. Now we have to do our order of operations for this problem, the second level of our check. What's going to come first? We did our order of operations a few times last week. What has to come first? Come on guys, we still have one more example. I want you to be able to start your homework in class. What's gonna come first in the math problem? According to our order of operations, what's gonna come first? The addition or subtraction, I know. So that's what I'm asking. What's gonna come first? <laughs> For this specific problem, what am I gonna do first? I agree that it's subtract, addition and subtraction like you read the problem. So for this problem, what are we gonna do first? What piece am I gonna solve first?
The nine plus the seven, yes. Okay, so nine plus seven. 16, and then we have a minus 15 and a plus two, and it equals a nine minus six. Remember, we just do a little bit at a time. Okay, okay. ooh, didn't want that. Okay, so now what am I gonna do now? Taking it one piece at a time. What am I gonna do now? What do I have to do now? Come on. Remember, you're getting participation points for doing actually participating in the chat. So people that are not participating in the chat, you're not going to be getting full credit for your participation. Yeah, 16 take away 15 is what? Exactly, Willie. Thank you. 16 take away 15 is 1. So this says 1 plus 2 equals. 9 minus 6. Okay. 1 plus 2, 3 equals 9 minus 6, 3. Did we check out? Did it work? Yes. So we put the check mark that it worked and we circle our final answer so we know where it's at on the page. All right. So we did one that just had variables on both sides. And we did one that we had to combine like terms with variables on both sides. The only thing we haven't done yet, and it was mentioned back here in step one, use the distributive property. So we're gonna be doing one that has the distributive property in it. Two times three X plus seven equals Or x plus 21. All right. So do I have combined like terms? No, I have a distributive property. That's where we have this number on the outside in a parentheses. What does that mean when we have it set up like that? What does it mean? When we have this two on the outside and a parentheses, what are we supposed to do? What math operation is that telling us we're supposed to do? What math operation is it telling us we're supposed to do? I don't think so. It's telling us multiply. That's right. Because remember, we talked about that the parentheses means multiply. What it's saying is multiply this 2 times the 3x and the 2 times the 7. Okay. 2 times the 3x and 2 times the 7. Okay. That's what we're going to be doing. We're not messing with the 4x side. We're not doing any of that. Okay, so if I do that, that two times the three X, what ends up happening if I do two times three X? Yeah, I get a six X. And I do two times a seven. So I get a six X plus 14, because it was a positive 7 and a positive 2, has to equal a 4x plus 20. I have a typo on the first line. I apologize. OK. So now it looks like what we did before. Smallest letter to biggest letter. What are we going to do? How are we going to get it there moved? Smallest letter to biggest letter. Who is the smallest letter that we have? The 
the 4x. So how are we going to move that 4x? What's its sign right now in stone? How are we going to move that 4x? What sign is it right now? It is a positive, and we have to do the opposite of a positive to make the big zero. So we're going to have to do a subtracting 4x. Now, remember, since it's a 4x, we have to make sure we're subtracting it from the 6x, not the 14. Okay. Since it's, a, it's an X, it has to be subtracted from its X buddy, okay? Got to keep the types together. And we're going to subtract the 4X from the other side of the equal sign from the, from the 4X so that we make what? Why did we subtract a 4X? We wanted to create what? The goal of that was to create what? Our big zero, yeah, nice. Okay, so we got our big zero over here, gone. We now are doing the math. This says six X take away four X. So what are we gonna have if we do that? Six X is taking away four X's. If we do that, what are we gonna have? Two X, yes, okay. So we're gonna have two X plus 14, that's already there, is gonna equal what's left on the other side since we made that big zero. What's left on the right-hand side? The 20. Um, Brian, pay attention, there was a typo in the first line. Okay. Um, so now what? Is the X piece all by itself yet? Is the X piece all by itself yet? No, so we need to go ahead and make another big zero, right? What is the other big zero we're gonna make? What number are we gonna make into a big zero? What number are we gonna make into a big zero? I think the two X is fine. I don't think that needs to be into a big zero because there's not a like X out there. The 14, yeah, we have to make him into a big zero because I see 14 is a plain old number. I see 20 is a plain old number. That's why we need to big zero them because they have to go over to its like term, its like number. So we need a big zero because they're both just plain old numbers. Just like with that 4x, we moved it to the 6x because they were both x's, right? You okay with that? So how am I gonna move that 14? So it becomes a big zero. What are we gonna to do to that 14 to make it into a big zero? Some of you have private messages you need to read, please. Subtract 14 from both sides. Yes, exactly. So minus, that's a no, equal sign. Minus 14 from the left means we minus 14 from the right because whatever we do on the left, we have to do on the right. And whatever we do on the right, we have to do on the left. Okay, remember we're subtracting from the 14 to make him into a big zero. So make sure he's lined up with the 14 so you can big zero him. Okay, that leaves us what on the left-hand side? What's left after we big zero that 14? 
What's left after we big zero that 14? 2x is going to equal what's left on the other side once we brought over the negative 14. 6 is on there. Yep. Because 20 take away 14 is 6. All right. So we finished the distribution. We finished make our big zeros. Now we have to isolate this x. We have to get the big one. What are we going to do so we can get the big one? What has to go because it's attached to an x and it shouldn't be there? What has to go because it's attached to the x but it shouldn't be there? The 2. And we're going to get rid of it by the dividing by 2. Not by 2x, by 2. Because we want the x to stay because we want to be able to say x equals, right? So 2x over 2, arrow off, equals. 6 over 2. So we get our final answer. Yay. What's our final answer going to say? Now that we've made our big one and we can cross it out, we know we just have x. What is going to our x going to be equal to? 3. Okay. So now we got to go check it. Right? We've got to go check to make sure that when we put that three back into the equation, everything works out. So we go back to the original equation. Anywhere we see an X, we're putting that three. Okay. Anywhere we see an X, in parentheses, we're putting that three. We learned how to do that substitution stuff last week. Okay, now this can look tricky because we have all these parentheses right here, but don't overthink it. Start from the inside, work your way out. You have to handle your grouping first. Inside my grouping, I have a three times three, which is none. Oops, nope. Okay. And then I have a four times three, which is 12. I handled my multiplication and I'm getting ready to handle this grouping because until I've got that multiplication handled, I can't start doing that parentheses. I can't start combining like terms. So what is that parentheses equal to now that we're handling the grouping of the parentheses? Nine plus seven equals what? Sixteen. Has to equal, and we're going to leave that because we're not on the adds and subtracts row yet. Okay, two times sixteen is what? Because that's what that says next. Two parentheses sixteen means two times sixteen. What is two times 16 equal? Thirty-two, And 12 plus 20 equals 32. So did it work out? Did we check? Do not automatically write that they check though. You actually have to do the math, okay? You actually have to do the math to double check because it's super easy in the adding and subtracting section to misdo it. So it checked out and X equals three is our final answer. Okay, turn in your notes, please. Armani, I sent you a message. Could you please be respectful and respond to it? Okay, hit turn in. Go up here and hit save first though. Save now, just to be on the safe side. Then go ahead and hit the turn in button. Let me 
bring this back to our Google Classroom. So turn that in, done or not, turn it in. You will notice that your assignment five, that's what threw me off, it's activity six, assignment five. Um, your assignment five is sitting out there. And I want you in groups to, for the rest of the period, which we still have 20 plus minutes of the period, you're gonna go into your group and you're gonna start your homework assignment. So you're gonna go in, you're gonna open your assignment in Cami. I'm gonna be changing the name in a minute. And you are gonna be working with your partners one at a time, not I'm gonna work on it and then ask if you guys got this. That's not working as partners. Partners talk them out loud together. Notice the top two is what we did Thursday, and then you get into ones that we did today, okay? And then the last one, there is a use the table to simplify. That was a week ago. And a plot the graph, that was a week ago. And then 80 is like how we finished last week on Wednesday. So you are expected to be working one at a time together 